Live by the Sword Tactics, developed by Labrador Studios and published by Gravit Games Arise, is a turn-based tactical game with heavy focus on strategy, but not so much on RPG. It draws a lot of inspiration from games like Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Ogre, and you can see it in the art and battle mechanics. However, the focus is not on character development that helps you care about your team or inspired asymmetrical maps that adds to the challenge and storytelling, and it misses several other mechanics associated with tactical RPG. Once you are free from those expectations, you start enjoying it more and valuing the game for what it is, a great tactical experience. From the start, you can play Skirmish, balanced maps where you play against AI, the multiplayer similar to Skirmish, but you play against human, locally or online, and they are soon to release a ranked mode. Lastly, the story mode serves as a tutorial for the core mechanics of the game. The writing is nothing to tell home about, but it has good moments. The gameplay felt like Skirmish maps chained together, because there were nothing memorable about them. There is no battle uphill, breaching a wall, or anything asymmetrical. But I'm pretty sure it was not lack of inspiration, because more interesting maps are used in the animation between battles, and there are more creative playable maps later in the game. There is no moving around a world map, equipping members of your team, buying items, leveling up, or making up stories for your secondary characters, about their professions of choice, or why their parents are disappointed. Except for Roland, he shows properly. More about him later. As I mentioned before, the focus is on strategy. The battles are tailor-made, and there's always a way to progress using your wits. So if you like to grind over level before steamrolling, this game is not for you. The classes, at the moment, are quite common from the genre, but it is worth to talk about Jack, a brawler with a kit fun to play. His skills have a hand associated to them, and every turn you can use two skills one with the left and another with the right hand, usually with some extra effects. My favorite skills are Superman Punch, helps you reach an enemy one block away, and the Haymaker, a powerful blow that pushes the enemy away. Pushing the enemy away is excellent in this game, as you can set up for a follow-up with another character, or just dealing extra damage when they hit a wall or another enemy. This collision damage is so strong that it can cause damage even when their defenses are up. I also used a lot Roland, the wizard. He has a skill that pushes the enemy and himself in opposed directions to create some distance. But what makes him so strong is the 100% accuracy of his magic. This highlights another issue with Live by the Sword. In a game where you cannot change character status by leveling up or adding items, it is invaluable having someone consistently causing damage. The hit chance can be as annoying as in XCOM, where you miss most of your attacks in one turn. Overall, the story mode was fun, and it improves a lot in the later acts where there are some interesting maps. The second to last battle was cathartic, but the last battle was long and anticlimactic. By finishing the acts in the story mode, you unlock the Tactician Mode and the Adventure Mode. Tactician Mode are challenging puzzles set in creative maps, where you need to finish in the minimum number of turns possible. Adventure Mode is where I scratched my itch for some roleplay. You progress by building the world map after each victory. You can also visit the city to recover your squad health, buy items or recruit more people. I didn't find fun battle maps like in the Tactician Mode, but there are three things I found there. Freedom to decide my path and my team. You have some sort of character progression by buying items that make your game more challenge or easier. And the permadeath made me care even more about my squad. Those added a lot to the roleplay for me. The soundtrack is great and there's some nice sound effects. I love the art style but the HUD sets it back a bit. It is quite hard to navigate and I could never understand properly what are the buffs and the buffs the enemies are using. I had a lot of fun playing Live by the Sword Tactics. It bought in some new ideas and I think it nailed it so far, with some rough edges. I expect to see more innovative classes and to check the board creation mode. Also, they might need to rethink some of those battle mechanics once the ranked mode is released. If you are looking for a nice, focused, turn-based tactical challenge, Live by the Sword Tactics might be the game for you. It is coming out from Early Access on Steam on October 28. Thank you for watching and be excellent to each other. Cheers!